she was running away, wasn't she? It's my place for someone to hide. I did think of looking there until the football she'd seen it for years. For Bennett, Dr. Lawson, skiving again. Of course. Why didn't you come with us, Arthur? You'll let him off, Mr. Coogan, won't you? Oh, go on. John says we should mind our own business. He was in a foul mood. Oh, well, that's the schoolgirl wearing him out. No, no, that's all going swimming. And even though she's young, she's very young, she's also a tremendously mature, wonderfully witty and dazzlingly talented redhead. And we hate her. Yes, we really hate her. Yeah, hi, it's a Cambridge number. What name is it, please? Bennett. Dr. Bridget Bennett. Bennett? Yeah, thanks. The number you require is Cambridge 0223. Oh, this ought to be in the cubby by now. And don't slouch. Slouch. Yes, madam, what can I do for you? What's going on? Where do you think you're going? I'm escorting this young lady on a tour of the colleges. And what about the desk? Dave's taking over. Not without my permission, he's not. You gave that over a week ago, Mr. Coogan, when you put me on late. Again. There's my afternoon off. Always look as if I've been hit in the small of the back by the 845 from Paddington. Oh, Felix looks happy there, doesn't he? Good Dr. Bennett? Yes, me. Really say it was all right for me to stay. He's fine. He's going to pick you up from my place in London tomorrow night. Good. We've all got another day together. Uh, what are those? We were looking at these before you came. Um, they were taken at the book launch. Any of Mummy? Felix is there, in the background. Felix? At a book thing? She's wearing her Paris suit. Where's Felix? There. That's Paul Elvin. Do you know Paul? He used to go to school with Felix. He was cricket captain. Oh, no, I'm hopeless with names. No, no, I don't know him. Uh, people sort of turn up at those things, you see. Get out of here and we can talk. You bastard. You shit. You bloody wrecker. Wrecker? Who are you calling a wrecker? I'll kill you. Ah! Oh, marvellous control, Arthur. Shouldn't you be singing something in Italian? Sorry, haven't got the hat for it, Mom. Felix always used to make me laugh. And now something bad has happened. He's angry all the time. That's since Mummy died. No, since before. Since they sent the tie. The tie? Felix's school tie. It came in a packet to Mummy from a hotel. They said her son had left it behind. Felix has never been to any hotel. There was awful trouble. And now he keeps getting into trouble. And... And what, Lizzie? He didn't tell the truth about when Mummy died. 
In what way? About where he was. We were at a party. We were staying the night. But as soon as Dad dropped us off, Felix left. He was gone ages. You won't tell Dad any of this, will you? Thanks for the loan of art, Mr. Coogan. Jolly kind. Oh, I took a call from your brother, Dr. Bennett. My brother? Yes. What did he say? Not a lot. Wanted to know where you were. And did you tell him? Well, had I been informed of your whereabouts, Dr. Bennett, I would have been happy to oblige. But as it was, I was unable to help. And did he leave a message? No. Truth to tell, he was what I can only describe as curt. Wait a sec. Just see if Oscar's run back. What's the matter? Oh, it's just a mix-up. Which it doesn't have, brother. Everything's a mix-up. Message for you, sir. Thank you. A lady. Dr. Bennett? Found a couple of times, though. Thank you, Stephen. Where the hell have you been, Gilardi? And what the hell is all this? It looks like rather a lengthy printout, sir. Or maybe it's one of those Andrex adverts with the puppy. It's a 20 bloody three page printout, Gilardi. From pathology on the Neil case, which, correct me if I'm wrong, is now dead and buried. Well, that's as maybe, sir, but the thing. Right! Since that is. as maybe, I would deem it a great personal favour, Gilardi, if you could get your frigging finger out and get on with the job in hand. Bridget and I'd be delighted to help whenever we can. Well, that's kind, but I usually have things pretty well worked out. I'm sure you do. I'm just being selfish. She's a pleasure to have around. She's a great little girl. I know. Uh, would you like another drink? No, thank you. This is the bag that I found. Lizzie must have been thrilled. Well, I haven't given it to her. It's full of money, a great deal of money. Excuse me. Hello. Bridget, it's Oscar. Oscar Gallardi. Uh, Oscar? Oh. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh... Hello, how are you? Fine. Look, I was wondering if we could meet. Um, well, the uh, uh, thing is, I'm pretty tied up for some time. Mm, certainly, most evenings totally down the pan. Uh, work and stuff, you know. New term. I'm not suggesting we go on a cruise, Bridget. Yes, I know, the money. Yes. Look, things have been a bit hectic up here, but I have to be in London for a few days. Perhaps we can meet there. Oh, and I can bring the pathology report. I'm so sorry. I, I'm terribly sorry. I, I'll it, get please. you another it's one. It's a pint of milk. I'll do it later. Please. I, I didn't mean to startle you. I just wanted to talk. 
about Sandra? Yeah. My name's Paul Elvin. Yes, I know. What about Sandra? It's a bit awkward here. Well, it's here or nowhere. The night she died, I was in your flat. I can't... I can't get out of my head how she was when I left her. She was terrified. What of? I don't know. She wouldn't say. I reckon it might have been a health club. I thought that was a great success. No, she wanted out. She put money into it, but it wasn't working. I'm not sure why. Anyway, she wanted it back. They weren't having it. So she just helped herself? Well, she'd never have taken it if I hadn't won the scholarship. What? I got this cricket scholarship to Australia. Was Sandra going to go with you? Yeah. Lizzie, come on. We're home. Yeah, I can understand that. Yes. I need to start again, get away. <sighs> Don't know why she chose me. Maybe, or maybe because I wasn't much of a challenge. But it could have been anyone, I always knew that. I'm sure that's not true. Oh, yeah. Oh, she just needed someone around to make her feel good. She didn't seem to think too much of herself, which was crazy. She was amazing, wasn't she? That night, how long did you stay here? Oh, not late. It had just hit her. This was it. We really were leaving the next day. She got into a panic about Felix and Lizzie and said she wanted to be on her own, so I... I left. I waited for her for hours at Heathrow the next morning. In the end, I phoned the house in Colchester. I couldn't face any more flat from Felix, but I didn't know what else to do. As it turned out, I got the housekeeper. She... she told me. How do you mean, more flack from Felix? Since he found out about us. God knows how. Well, he'd taken to phoning me at home and going apeshit. He called that night, around midnight, screaming about how he was going to kill both of us. He even had to go at me at a sports club yesterday. Police came for him, but he did a run. What are you saying? That Felix had something to do with his mother's death? Maybe. No, I'm, no, I'm not saying anything. But why was she so scared? Oh, I don't know. Doesn't make sense, does it? You know that bloke that turned up at the launch, Tony? Was he something to do with the club? I don't know. I think he's just someone who kept pestering her. He soon ran out of steam. Well, there was the other bloke. Gave her much more grief. He even turned up at her flat. That's why she moved out in the end. She said there was a flood. It was a Friday night, wasn't it? The night of the crash. Yes, why? I don't know why I didn't think of it before. Maybe there is something I can do. Thanks for the coffee. Where are you going? I'll call you tomorrow. Your father phoned. Everyone's looking for you. What are you doing here? <laughs> Come on, old chap. Can't be as bad as all that. Lunatic parked that car like that. I did. I borrowed it. <laughs> 